to go. Okay, before we start, uh, there are some basics uh, need to understand before using our system. Okay, uh, our system is a web-based system. We uh, do not require your site to install anything so, unless the PDF reader or something else. Okay, basically our system is a, is a, like the online system. So it's a web-based system. You do not need to install anything. And any browser that you can imagine is supported. Okay, so like the Microsoft Edge, huh? Google Chrome, Firefox, huh? Opera, and other browser. Huh? Okay, as long as you have the internet connections, then you can access to our system. Huh? Okay, so log in the website and you can find your project from the subscriber listing there. Huh? Okay, but today we are, I will use our demo huh? for, for the training purpose. Okay, so Select a project, put your username or, or maybe so called the login ID and the password. Okay, there you go. So for the first time login, uh, system will ask you for change the, I mean, ask you to change the password. Lah. Okay, so just put in an old password and then your new password. Lah. But if you want to skip for now, it's okay. You can click on the cancel button. Okay, so this is our system interface, uh, so-called the home page. Uh. We call this as a system manager. Uh. So you can look over here. Uh. Okay, you go into, uh, I mean the name, I mean the function will show here if you go into any of the functions. Okay, so now we will go for the sales administration. Uh. Okay, sales administration. Okay, so Every function you go in, the first time will go direct you to the personal organizer. This is something like the, uh, this is something like the, is a is your personal mailbox uh, inside the system only within the system only. It doesn't say link to your personal email. This is more like on more like the internal task purpose uh. Okay, okay. So this one you can ignore first. Okay, so this is our sales admin, uh, sales admin function. Uh, I think I need to guide you from the how to create a company first. Okay, sorry. So we skip for this one first. Okay. Uh, to start up a project, we need to have a company. We need to register the company. But usually, we for the initial setup, we already done for you. But let's say in future, you have a new company, I mean, there's a new project come in and there's, a, of course, another company. Okay, so you need to create a company. Then the follow-up process will be you need to create a project. Lah. Okay, then you need to create a face code. Then the unit numbers, the so-called lot number lah, or maybe. Okay, so a lot number and then register your purchases. Lah. Okay, the sales entry. Lah. Or maybe doing the sales booking. Okay, then to the follow-up process to, for the progressive billing. Uh, update the update the certificate, then gen, continue generate billing, okay, for the loan tracking, okay, and until the end. Uh, all right. Oh, it's a oh, it's a long way to go. Cannot see the screen. Can you see the screen now? Showing anything? Oh, I think the chat box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it was it is it all right now? Okay. No, I don't think the chat box. Okay, never mind. Because I I think I not, I not reached the company screen yet. Okay. So the company's up is inside the system setup over here. Okay, then company setup. Okay, so all the created company were inside the listing over here. Okay, so to create a new company, we click the add button. Okay, company code is a uh, code that you want to show in the system. It's just a code only. 
uh, let's say what we need right now, let's say CSS. Lah. Okay, then CSS. Then develop. And then back. Okay. The company name. Lah. And then those are the additional information. Lah. So if you have you have one, then you can put in. Lah. Okay, uh, address. Okay, make it simple. Put in four, three. Yeah. Okay. Something like this. Huh? Okay. Then the telephone number, your company telephone number, which will be present on your letterhead later on. If X, if you have, then you can put in country code. MY, Malaysia, currency code, RM, okay, uh, GST, SST, I think it doesn't matter, I think SSME doesn't have the SST things, right, okay, so that's all, uh, invoice route, so I don't think you need to, in, you need to route up the invoice, lah. okay, then save, okay, so basically what we're doing right now is from A to Z, lah, okay, this is how to create a company, okay, next step, is to grant who, I mean your user, your staff, who can access the company. Okay, so go to the user set up. All right, so select your user, or maybe if you don't have, or it's a new staff, then you need to create a user. So let's have a quick one. Okay, that's new, let's say. New. New stuff. Okay, it's a normal stuff. Uh, this is system user. Then you assign the default password for your stuff. Okay, so this is the uh, that, that uh, the supporting information. Uh. So you can leave it, doesn't matter. All right, so these are the group. So it's just a normal card level, then you go for the SA card. Uh. But if they have uh, if they are the manager post, then keep them the manager post. Uh. All right, so it doesn't say you can give one post for one user each time. You can grant multiple posts. Uh. Okay, so this, what we call is user group. Okay, this is what we call is a user group. The access setting is from here, group setup. Okay, by default, we already have a default, I mean, a, a, a standard access. Uh. Okay, but if you feel you want to modify things, then you can go to the group set up there to change the access. Lah. Okay, so we go for the normal one first. Okay, card level. Lah. Then next, which department? Okay, uh, because we doesn't create any department yet, so this one we can skip for now. Next will be the company. Lah. CSS. Lah. Okay, our new company. Save. Okay, that's it. This is the way to create new stuff, new user ID, okay? And of course, if you already, I mean the project is already in the middle, okay? And then you have a new stuff coming in, then you can grant the department assessor, okay? But according to your code, okay. All right, next. Okay, next is finish this part. All right, come back to the first screen. Okay, system manager, uh, maybe I'm too fast. Uh, okay, let's cover again. Okay, system setup. Okay, you done everything. Basically, every function, the interface is the same. Okay, so all, this is the all the function menu over here. Then action button, uh, action button will be on the right hand side. Okay, this, uh, I mean, the, this positions. Uh, okay, function menu, and then action button. So basically, all the layout is the same one. Okay, we doesn't, have a design to jump here, jump there, okay, jumping up, right? So to go back to the first screen, we don't click the back button. Yes, uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, because we are the web-based system, okay, everything must be moved forward, okay? You, okay, if you want to cancel anything, you can click cancel or just go to other function now, but not to click the back button, okay? We are very depending on the browser sections, uh. If your browser sections uh, go haywire, okay, uh, something goes wrong, uh, your 
process also will have some funny things come out. Lah. Okay. So make sure uh try to avoid click the browser back button lah, unless it's necessary. Lah. Right? So basically if you want to cancel anything or you just want to just want to close it, then you can just direct to close it, that doesn't matter, or you can go to other functions to cancel your current actions. Lah. All right. So to back to the first screen, I mean the home screen, there's a system manager here. And then of course there's a log out. Lah. You can log out your system. Lah. Okay, system manager. Okay. Click on it. So we come to the first page. Huh? I mean the home, I mean our home screen. All right, now go to the sales administration. All right, so companies up, we're done. New stuff, we're done. Okay, now we're going to create a project for this. So we go to the last year system setup, is it? No, we go to the property setup. Okay, we go to the property setup. Then we go for the project code. Lah. So basically the setup is something like this, this flow. Uh, I mean this process. Lah. Property code, department code, then the property phase, set the property phase user, then set the law information. So basically it's a it's a one set. Lah. Okay, this part. Okay, just go to step by step only. Okay, first project code. Uh, of course, the company code over here, company code on the right hand side, company code, we must select the. Oh, sorry. I forgot to put myself in. Okay. Yes, uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, after you create a new company, make sure you put whoever have the access to the new company, uh, do the setting first. Lah. Okay. So myself, I need to assess and then see depends who else need to assess. Lah. Okay, who else need to assess the system? All right, so this one cancel. Lah. Just leave it. Okay, sorry for the mistake. Okay, so let's go back again. Property setup, project code. All right, com code. This is the company code. Lah. Com code, uh, CSS. Lah. The new our new company. All right. At project code. What we need to do? Maybe there's a uh, one. This one. Okay. And the description. Uh, what is this description? Uh according to your project description, of course. Uh in uh Daman somewhere. Phase one. Right. Hey, my project is here. So now I'm going to create my department code. Okay, so so called the phase code. Lah. Okay, so I need to add. Lah. So this is the phase one. What we need to create. Lah. Let me see. The project code is SSP1. Okay, lah. I follow the same. Not P1, can I change? I don't want the P1. I want the something unique. Mean, okay, lah. So just mean, lah. All right, so department code. Then I only create the phase one, lah. Phase one. Okay. Okay, department code with that. Okay, uh, so sorry, the face code. Uh, okay, but I call it department code. Uh, okay, since our uh, presentation is department code. Okay, now property face. This is to add the the face of uh, the details of the face. All right, so we need to add property code. Okay, property code referring inside the department code. Uh, okay, so we set property code. Face descriptions. Uh, the description of this faces. Okay. It doesn't mean hey, why the mean uh, what else? Uh, phase one. Okay. Phase one. All right. Protocol. 
success main, no? it's belong to the success main project because maybe one company they are having different different project okay maybe i have a project in uh in the in in, in, in maybe in ipo okay and another project in pahang so you can create a, create a different project no? okay chapter code Geo debtor account. This one you might need to refer to your account people, lor. okay? Account team. Lor. What is the uh what is the account? What is the debtor account for this project? Lor? If you do not have a multiple face, yes, you still need to create this face code. Okay, you need you still need to create this face code, but maybe you can skip for the project code. Lor. Okay, uh, let's say you just have only one. Lor. Okay, so property phase is a compulsory setting. Lah. Country, uh, Malaysia. Okay, then the MUKI, no? your project details are the MUKI and the display. So let's say uh, anywhere. Lah. Yeah. So this is your HDN number. Lah. Test info, this is additional info. So these three columns you can skip. Uh, <clears throat> you can skip because maybe later on the progressive billing or any format, okay, you might need to put in the I need, I mean you need to put in your bank details or any other else information. So we uh, I mean the our technical side, uh, we might use this column to fulfill your requirement. Uh. So these three basically you can just ignore first. Uh. All right, so the information we need your site to key in is i mean your site need to do is this part all right so this part done then we can save up. okay property phase done so next will be the property phase user okay so we need to send the property code no? okay where is it ssp1 then we assign who can access this property code. I mean, this uh, this project. Uh, who can access this project? So I need to put myself in, and then maybe the new staff. Where's the new staff? Where's the new staff? Just new. Okay, new staff. Okay, so just two of us. Okay, all right. So that's it. That's all. Just save only. Okay, now lot informations. Okay, lot information. Your you need information, so, right? So, of course, uh, there's a way to add your unit number. You can, eat, you can add one by one. Okay, you can add one by one, but I don't think it's possible. Uh, now, now the project minimum is like 100 hours project. Okay, let, let for the, for, let, let's say for the, those apartment condo, at least at least 1,000 for now there. Okay, so I don't think you need I don't think you need to add one by one. Okay. Just use our import logs function. Okay, import logs function. So click on it. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, why is this one? We should have a sample lot. Uh sorry, give me a second. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, again, uh, sample data. Can we zoom? Okay, okay uh, it's a sample data. I uh, click on the sample data. Then you can download your, it's a template for us, for the system. Okay, open it and skip for a second. What's that? Okay, never mind. Skip for now. I'm not going to key anything. Eh? Okay. All right. So this is our sample, uh, the template. Lah. So you can put in all your information over here. Okay, so the unit number, block, uh, level number, level description, and then those uh, support, uh, the other information. Okay, if you're not really sure what does it mean, then you can ask, uh, you may, I mean, you can drop an email to us. Lah. So we will explain to you. Lah. Okay, price list, build method. Yeah, I think we need to enhance the, I think we need to enhance this. Excel file. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, the PB schedule. Yeah, we, I think we need to enhance this part. Okay, okay never mind. 
So, uh, as long as there's a template for you to enter the things, but don't worry, we will soon uh, enhance the template for more easy understanding. Lah. Okay, so this one we skip. Lah, huh? Okay, so after you key everything, then you can put the import data. Lah. Okay, click on the import data, then you can input your file. Next. Uh, there's some error there. So, yeah, we will also import the part. Lah. Okay, so never mind. So when the time you're using, I think we should have an enhancement on that already. Okay, so lot information. So once you have done everything, I mean, so you have import all the data, import all the unit numbers, then you find out uh, maybe one of the unit missing. Okay, forgot in the Excel file. Then you can click on the add button. Okay, lot number. You can print your lot number. Put a lot number, uh, let's say, uh, for easy one, uh, nine. Okay, number one. Okay. Uh, surface, block, lot number, description, uh, level description, this is the supporting information. So, of course, your area, land area, share it also is the supporting information. Shutter number, I don't think you get, I don't think you get now. Okay. Lot actual address, uh, this is the unit address, uh, but I don't think you have until you complete the building. Uh. Okay, this also you can ignore. Okay, now the important part is the price list. Uh. Okay, what is the listing price? Okay, the minimum price, uh, I think you can say that. Okay, so let's say this is, I need to sell about kind of, okay. I need to sell at least 200k. All right. So then the PDT number, HCC number, you can enter over here. So, booming status. Uh, is this unit is reserved for Bumi or non Bumi? Okay. Bill method. So, uh, installment billing is not working. Okay. We don't practice installment billing. So, use progressive billing. All right. Progressive billing schedule. Okay, by default, you have one HDA1. Okay, you have one HDA1, but of course, if you have a different schedule, if you have a different schedule, then later on, I will show you how to create a schedule. Okay, so usually just, just I mean, I mean usually just a, just a two different schedule. One is for the HDA1 and another one is the complete unit. Okay. Of course, it's a different schedule setting. Uh, maybe I, I have a sample to show you later on. All right, HDA one, okay, by default. Uh. Okay, redemption amount. Uh, what is the redemption amount? Uh? Okay, redemption amount. So agent commission schedule. So this will be another features for you uh, to calculate the agent commissions if you have a uh, corporate with some agents company, okay? So uh, I'll roughly show you agent schedule. So this schedule also need to be setting up how it's go how to going to calculate the uh, the commissions, and then this part is the agent commission percentage. Okay, it's based on percentage or based on the fixed amount. So let's say it's a percentage, then maybe it's a two percent of the schedule. Okay, two percent of the schedule or maybe the price sales. Okay, or it's a fixed amount. Let's say one unit you sell, you get 2,000. Okay, so I skip for now. Uh, additional remarks. You can put additional remarks over here. If anything, you want the remarks for this unit number. All right, so basically this, uh, that's it all. Okay, then you can save. Okay, so if you have some information need to update, then you can come back to log information, open the unit number, I mean select the unit number, edit. Okay, press on the edit button, then you can put add in some information or do the modifications. Uh, uh, maybe 400k. Okay. All right, that's it. Okay, so this is the way you, uh, I mean, you have a, uh, I mean, the import from template, our template, or Add manually. Okay, add manually. How you add the unit number manually. 
Okay, so if the unit number have no any sales entry, I mean, there's no any uh, purchaser or booking or any record before, so it's still new, you can delete. Uh. Okay, there's a delete button here. You still can delete it. Okay, but if some if there's some record that has used, I mean, there's tag to this unit number, then the delete button is not working anymore. Uh. Right? Okay, so this is about the lot information, sir. Okay, so next part I'm going to show you is uh okay, GL code. I need to expand a bit on the GL code part. All right, so need our property code, select our property code, and because this is still new property code, there are some only there are only some default property code. I mean, sorry, not property code. Default GL code. GL code. This is what we so-called GL code. Okay, it's a charges code. Okay, this is a charges code or maybe some, this is a transition code that you can say. Depends whatever the term you want to call it. But in our system, we call GL code. Okay, it's a code to use in the transaction. Okay, so you see, progressive billing will use PB. In late payment interest, it will be IA. Okay. All right. So, uh, I need explanation, no explanation. Okay. So, basically, you can check on the code what this doesn't mean. So, usually, we will define the transition based on the first, I mean, the first three or two characters in front of the code. CN will, will represent for credit note. Law. Okay. DN will be debit note. Uh, this will be interest. This is the late delivery. This is the progressive billing. Huh? And of course, there are some other code over here. So MB will be the miscellaneous billing. Huh? And this is the official receipt. Okay, payment voucher. And the last four, you can skip. Huh? Doesn't matter. You can skip. All right. So what can we do now? Uh, I think we import code. Huh? Import from somewhere else. Okay. So this import code is can be used before you create any transactions. Okay, let's say this is your, I mean, this is your second phase, I mean, second project. Okay, and you wish to copy the code from your another project. So let's say it's from the sample. Yeah, maybe we copy from sample. So you don't need to add one by one for each of the codes. So you can import the code. You can import the code from any of your other projects. Okay, so let's say a sample phrase. I want to I want to copy from here. So that's it. That's it. Of course, the double entry number. I mean, this is double entry number lah. Is linked in the financial accounting. Okay, the double entry number. Okay, when you I mean when your site or maybe the accountant side doing the posting, okay, posting to financial accounting, posting to GL, they need to set up the debit account number, credit account number, okay, the double entry account number before posting the transitions. Okay, this is to tell the system when, <clears throat> when you're doing the posting, you go post to the debit account to which account and then credit to which account. All right, so just as only. All right, so there's a local over there. So, uh, Where's the PB? PB, 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 okay, PB. Okay, PB, there are some settings you need to understand. Uh. Okay, edit. So this is a default description only, uh, but of course, when you're doing your PB, they will follow your schedule. They will follow your description inside your schedule setting there. Okay, so next part, we will talk about the schedule. Okay, this, this is a, just a default. It's just a default description only, All right? So post consolidate some of this one leave it. We must uh we leave it to take. Due days uh, according your of course according your policy lah. What's the how many due days you given? Twenty one days or thirty days? Okay, and then late payment charges. Okay, I'm sure there's a late payment charges lah. Okay, so late payment charges how many percentage? Ten percent by them. How many grace period you given? Oh, same days oh. But if your agreement say 30 days, I mean, your, this is 30 days, uh, this one need to change to 30 days also. Lah. 
right? Okay. LPI skip period, this one you can ignore because it's not really practiced in the sales. I mean, I mean this is this is also for the LPI calculation, but different calculation method. Lah. This is not going to calculate based on, I mean, in your uh in the sales I mean, lah, industry. Okay, this is usually for those complete projects. Uh, usually more on the commercial things, uh, but not for the sales administration. So this one you can skip. Minimum LPI. This is uh something like you can accumulate the interest amount. Okay, but if sales admin project building get interest, I don't think it's a it's a few ringgit. Uh. At least I think ten ringgit over plus plus uh. Okay, so this one you also can skip uh. Okay, the important thing is. You late, I mean the if the payment is late, then you just charge accordingly. You need like even I think maybe ten ringgit or one ringgit. I think your guys also going to charge lah. Okay, all right. Uh, what else? Okay, that's all. All right, this is the GL code lah. All right, and if let's say in the future, then you need to edit some descriptions. Then you can come back to the GL code to edit any descriptions that you want. Uh, let's say DN something else. Uh, DN IS. Uh. Uh, this is for the retention. Retention. Uh, what else? Okay, let's, let's say this one. Uh. Termination transmit. You don't like the description. Then you can change it. Uh. You can change the description. Uh. Okay, I don't want to save. I remain. Alright, so this is about our GL code. Uh. Okay, next we will talk about the schedule, progressive billing schedule, the HDM one, or maybe you have other schedule. Okay, so it's inside the system setup, progressive, progressive billing schedule. Right. Progressive billing schedule. So we try to check on the HDM one. So this is the default schedule we're going to use. Uh. So total, I think it's 100% uh, uh, over there. All right. So this is the standard law. Uh, upon signing, the first 10% billing. Okay, it's a standard law. Uh, and then the foundation, food thing, this is followed uh, according to the SPA. Uh, as, as well as the HDA. Uh. All right. So now, if you have a different schedule, you want to set up in a different schedule, okay? For let's say a special schedule uh, for different scenario. So let's see we can whether we can use anything else. Okay, so let's say HDA2. Okay, I'm going to create one HDA2. So I just add, so just add and then put in the things off. Uh, so I just use, use it as a sample. Uh. Okay, you press add, you insert your schedule code, then you name it. Okay, what is this schedule for? Okay, something like this uh, for complete unit. Uh. Uh, Alright. Then you need to put stage one. Uh. Okay, stage code. Uh, we put one. Uh. GL code. What is the GL code you wish to use? Okay, you want to use the default PB or you want to have another PB to differentiate two different policy billing schedule. Okay, the default one maybe you use PB, but then for this special unit. I mean the spare, I mean the uh, another schedule you want to use another code. Okay, doesn't matter. You can use complete. What's the short form of it? Okay. For example, but of course. You need to have this GL code. Okay, you must have this GL code created in the GL code setting first. Lah. Okay, so this one I don't want to change. Lah. Okay, PB. Let's go back to PB. All right, so now stage description. Okay, this is the description of the stage only. So let's say it's an uh, open signing SPA. Lah. Okay, then you put in your percentage, it's a 10%. And then match it formula. Uh, you can copy this from the HDA one. Okay, this usually apply for the first stage only, which means every time you do the, I mean, every time you create the sales entry, you execute the 
the SPA, system will automatically create the, this billing for you. Okay, system will create this billing for you for the first 10%. First okay, upon signing SBA one. Okay, so you create a sales entry, then you the automated generate the first 10%. But of course, uh, if you wish to generate manually by yourself, your staff, okay, yourself, then you can skip this formula. Okay, otherwise, then you can insert this formula. Okay, you can copy from the HDM one. All right, so invoice phrase. This is a description going to display in the invoice. Huh? Okay, so you can put in the maybe more details or maybe more proper wording over here. All right, so now, save. That's it. Can we add? Oh, I cannot add. I cannot add the things because uh, somebody has been using it. So I cannot set up the... Okay, if the schedule already used by some sales entry, you cannot modify any, you cannot insert the stitch anymore. Okay, so is it this one? Yeah, this one, this is the one. So let's let's say like assemble. Okay, this is the one. We use PB. All right. Stitch one A and this one stitch two, stitch code two. Okay, so for example, this is the one. Let's say I just created this uh, new schedule. Okay, so I can go back the lot information. Okay, I can come back to lot information. I can assign to full. Okay, but remember, this is just a default setting only. Over here is just a default setting because when the time you create the sales entry, you register the purchaser. So over there, there's a there's a, I mean there's a option to let you choose again what is the actual PP schedule they're signing. Okay. So that's it. This is the progress billing schedule. Alright. So next will be register sales entry. Okay, doing the booking, okay, sales booking, or maybe it's execute the sales entry. All right, so we need to go to the sales processing over here. Sales processing, there's a sales entry. Okay, when you're doing the sales entry, make sure you have select, I mean, not only sales entry, lah. doing any of the transactions, anything, make sure you have go to the pro, uh, correct. Property code. Okay, make sure you have go to the correct property code. Say so now, click on the new entry lock. Uncommitted lot. So this is the one. Yeah, it's the one and the only one I created. Okay, reserve lot. Reserve lot will be referred over here. Lot reservations. So let's say your site practice uh, reservations, then you can use this function now. Okay, I will explain it later on. Okay, entry type is a sales booking law, or you want to direct execute the SBA, also okay. So by default, we go for the sales booking first. Lah. Next. Okay, booking date. Uh, according, depends, depends your set, uh, depends your date, lah, your entry. Lah. So I put June, lah, you see. All right, so the details are, Booking expiry date. This is expiry date. Uh. The booking which means valid until 15 only. Uh. So after 15, uh, consider is a cancel. Uh. I'm sure there's a there's a I mean there's a period for the for those sales booking case. Uh. Okay. Okay, uh expiry entry, expiry date is uh this one. Okay. Price listed. Price listed. Uh. Price sold. How much? What is the final price? I mean, how much you sell? Okay, how much you sell? Right? In the situ, I mean, how much you sell to the producer? Lah? So let's say 500k. 500k. So, of course, discount this one, you can leave it. Lah. This is the thing. Lah. But of course, let's say you listed 400k, 400,000. 
but you actually sell maybe three eight eight. It's discount total uh, 11k. La. Okay, so it's calculated accordingly. La. So this one will be uh, 400. La. Sorry, 500. All right. Sales staff. Who are the sales staff? Oh? Okay, so uh, by default, it's empty. It's nothing. Right? So you can click on this triple dot button to register your sales staff. Oh? Who are the sales staff? Handle this case. So uh, contact code. This contact code will be, is, uh, is this one. Oh? Okay, this is the contact code. Okay, so maybe let's say you want to set uh, maybe this is a uh, uh, there. I mean, uh, each of the sales staff has uh, their own contact code. Uh, so, or maybe your company assigned what is the contact code for this stuff. So let's say uh, uh, what is the code we can set. Yeah, so let's say CSS project, and then this is the first uh, number one staff. Okay. So it's got any okay, for example, this is a sales staff. Okay, and of course those are the supporting information. So you want to key, if you want to key in, then you can key in. Okay, but the, right now and my important part is the name only. Okay, so the code. And the sales scheme, okay, the so-called the promotions. Uh, you can put in your promotions. Uh, okay, you can put in your promotions. So if you don't have a record, then you can click on the triple dot button to add in more. Okay. To add in more uh, others schema. Okay, so let's say uh labor sales or uh, and then what else? Uh? I don't know what is this. I never mind. I skip. Uh. Okay, skip. Okay, progressive billing, grace period for SPA day zero law because usually the 10% is uh, paid immediately, ma, right? Usually the 10% is paid immediately. Ma. Okay, purchaser reference. Purchaser reference, so what's the reference number? La? Okay, you can write, you can set the reference number. What's the default reference number that you want to set for this? It's just P1 and what? PUR. What number? Uh? Okay, for example. Uh? And then this is the developer lawyer, uh? the information. Okay, if you, of course, uh, basically for your project, I mean for your site, everything is a blank one. Uh? So you need to come over here to add in. Okay, you come over here to add in. All right, so uh, what is that? Uh, let's say, okay, and here. Uh? Okay, I'm not sure who is this. Okay, and they or Andrew and uh, Andrew and Alan. Reference number. What is their reference number? So maybe maybe I put the same lah. Okay. Uh, of course they have their own reference number. Then you can update over here. Purchaser lawyer. So purchaser lawyer. Who are the purchaser lawyer? Okay, they are outsourcers or now they are uh, developer offer everything. Okay, so if they're using back the developer lawyer, okay, go for it. And of course, the reference number law. Okay. Sales agent. So if you don't have, just keep it up. Okay. This is for the agent, the agent commission purpose. Law. Okay. Bill method, this one cannot change, but you see the PB schedule. You can change PB schedule. Okay. You still can change the PB schedule according to the final. I mean, according the, to your the sales booking form there. I'm mean, not sales booking form, the agreement. Is it? I'm not sure what, what was the term for that. Okay. Okay, next. This is to register the information. Huh? Okay. Uh, purchaser. First purchaser name. Who, are, who, who is the first purchaser name? So let's put the name. Huh? Okay, purchaser. Uh, I mean purchaser. It doesn't require the code anymore. You just put in the name only and their uh, contact information. Uh, okay, the details information. Uh. Okay, like this. Uh. Okay, accept. Okay, you have one. Uh. 
Then you can add more joint purchaser. You can add more. Okay, you can add more. So let's say there's a two, three, four. Okay, how many purchasers? Depends how many purchasers there. Lah. Okay, is it joint name or what? Is a single is a single person or is a joint purchaser? Okay, okay, you can add in more name. Lah. Okay, so I just register one now. Okay, save. Okay, done. Sales booking. Done. Okay, so this is the sales booking part. Lor. Ah, sales booking part. Okay. So, so depends what is the actions you're going to do. Lor. Okay, so usually this period, the purchaser will going to apply the loan, those things. Okay, then it will come back to you whether the loan is approved or not. Okay, then start sign the loan agreement, those things, blah, 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 blah. Then until you sign the SPA, lor. right? Okay, now. Uh, what is that? Okay, so follow what the trend now they're going to apply the loan. Okay, so let's say this guy they're going to apply the loan. No? Okay, let's say I be giving them maybe three days, I think three or five days. Okay, after five days, okay, the loan has approved. Okay, or maybe you want to keep track on the setting first so they have updated you. What is the loan they're going to apply? It's submitted. Okay, it submitted the loan to the certain bank. Okay, so to keep track on this information, uh, you can go to the documentations. There's a purchaser loan tracking. Okay, there's a purchaser loan tracking. So uh, make sure you have set up the correct property code. So I go to the unit number. Okay, this is the guy. Oh, he's working well. Huh? I'm the only one. Okay, edit. Add loan. Loan type. Uh, is a government government loan or the uh, is outside the I mean the, the normal normal financing loan, uh, financial loan. Alright, so purchaser financial who are the which who are the bank? Uh? Of course, okay, of course the uh, basically yes, like what is what I said before, uh, basically the information is blank uh, for the and for the for your new site. So you need to register everything. Lah. Okay, the initial setup might be, might be, might be, might be, I mean, take time. Okay, but later on when you have new project coming, then you easily a lot lah, because you already have the existing record, I mean, existing data there. All right, so uh, financial, lah. what are the financial? Uh, let's say I apply CMB. Lah. Then reference number, if you have, then of course you can key in. Direct in some proper. Example, for example. Okay, then the financial lawyer, who are the financial lawyer? If still the same guy, then with the same guy. Huh? Uh, financial headquarter, of course, then you can sell. Huh? Okay, loan amount, how much they're going to apply. Okay, so usually now, I think people, I think very really less chance to apply 100% loan. Huh? Okay, but depends uh, depends how I mean how the sales done uh, okay how the sales going on so I just put any uh sample scenario uh, of no need take it serious just a sample only so let's say uh, uh they apply uh maybe ninety percent okay they apply they go to apply ninety percent of the loan so uh, how much ten percent of the, this one uh, okay four five four hundred fifty k four hundred fifty k. Okay, 90% so. Okay, loan status is in submit status. So I save. Uh. So that's it. So this is how, how you register their loan status. Uh. I mean, the loan information. Uh, if your company, if your, I mean your company need this information. Okay, so you can register the loan. Uh. Okay, now. Okay, after the five days. Uh, okay, five days. So loan agreement sign, okay. Offer letter sign. Okay, so basically it's on already. Okay, it's on. So they are they are, they are going to come here to sign the SPA. Lah. So they come sign the SPA, everything. Okay, done. So now you return to our system part. Lah. So you need to 
set the booking status into the execution status law. So now we go back to the sales processing, sales entry law. Okay, so this is the up and down button. Law. Okay, this is the up and down button. So which you can see, they will go to the next record, next record, next record. And this will go to the last record, previous record, and previous record again. So uh, it's just the up and down button. Now. But you're not going to use this to search your particular purchaser or the unit number. Okay, I assume you have over 1,000 sales entry already. Okay, you don't need to click 1,000 all the time. So go to the list, okay? Most of our transaction function or I think mostly lot of function, okay? You will see this list function. This list function is a more like a search function. Okay, you come to list and you can go to query button. This is the query button over here beside the print button, query button. Then you can search the information. So, so let's say I want to find the guy, uh, find this unit number, okay? Or you want to find a place of name. Where is the name, 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 name? Only this, okay, name I put here. Lah. Name one, so the application name. Or you just put one part of the application name also, okay, we accept it. Okay, we just find we our system we're going to find whatever have this word in the system. All right, so let's begin query. So something like let's start to search. Okay, then we found it. Uh. Okay, there's only one record. Uh. This is the one uh, we're going to do. Uh. So go to. Okay, click the go to button over here. There's the go to button. Then you can go here. Go to the record over here. Uh. Okay. Then you can click on the SPA execution, so, okay? But let's say password, uh, the sales is, uh, I mean, the sales has been cancelled, uh, okay? Then you need to, of course, you need to cancel this booking, okay? Then you can click on the termination, so, okay? Termination, put in your termination date, next. Then this is the, I mean, the summary, uh, this is the summary. So, of course, this uh, booking is uh, have no any transition yet. Okay, but uh, sometimes maybe your site has a booking fee, so-called booking fee. Lah. Okay, or maybe so-called your earnest, earnest money. Okay, it depends on what's the terms. Okay. Then, uh, sensor, never mind, sensor this one first. So I use another scenario. Lah. So let's say there's some uh, deposit or maybe a, uh, Booking, booking money, earnest money. Okay, you need to key in the receipt. Oh. Okay, sorry for jumping off because too much of the scenario in the sales I mean, uh, sales I mean industry. Okay, so it depends which part you guys practice. Oh. Okay, so if you have received some uh, this money, oh. okay, so official receipt. Oh. We go to official receipt, we need to add. Oh. Okay, uh, the date no? when is on date? So oh, I think June, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, they appear on June. Oh, lot number. So uh, if you don't remember, it doesn't matter. Come over here to find. Come here. You can put any of the word. Okay, put any of the word, then enter. Or you may put the unit number. Okay, or just some of the name. Okay, enter. So it's still coming up. Or you want to view all also can okay all your pro i mean all the all the unit number which have the purchaser or the sales booking or so called okay they will show up here okay this is the one okay issue to purchaser payment mode they maybe pay by what credit card okay pay by credit card then the or code yeah bank code is the is your or code okay the money going to which bank Okay, this is referring the jail code. Uh. Amount, how much? Let's say 500. Then set up. Okay, we have nothing to allocate because no billing. Uh. 
Okay, just save only. So that's it. There's a money in the account there. So let's say touch wood, uh, okay, cancel sale. Then uh, need to refund, no? Need to refund, no? So I termination. Uh, today did, uh, maybe next day, like five. Uh. Oh, sorry. I just remember the official is it? What's the date? June, okay, correct. June date is correct. Okay, come back again. Do the termination. Yeah, cancel on FIFA. Okay, then this is a summary. No? So it, as you can see, debit transition is nothing, but they have a credit transition, five ringgit. So credit transition, nothing. Remail, nothing. Of course, nothing also. Forfeit or refund. Refund, find that. Okay, or you will forfeit, find that, but I don't think I don't think there's a forfeit case here. Okay, unless something goes wrong. Right? Okay, now save. Save, 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 save. All right, that's it. So now you can issue maybe your, your department site where issue a check to refund the things or maybe online banking or depends on what, what is the procedure. All right, so to refund the money, we need to create a payment voucher. Lah. Payment voucher inside the sales administration, not inside the financial account thing. Lah. Because sales administration things, then you do it in the sales administration. Lah. Okay. So payment voucher, what we can do is just add on E. Okay, when is your department type of the check? Okay, a 15. Lah. So this is the one. Issue to a purchaser, payment mode by check. Okay, this one, check number, then be blah, 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 blah. Okay, anything else? Amount of 500. Okay, then you can allocate your official receipt. The location is important because it's uh, something like offset. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what's the, what's the terms that you call. It's something like tell the system this thing is paying for that. This thing is related to that transition, something like this. Okay. So when it comes to the actual case, this receipt is paying for any specific process billing. Then you need to allocate the money. No? Okay, let's say uh, this receipt is paying for the PV stage one. Uh, okay, then you need to allocate the stage one. No? So in the future, you also can easy to track. No? All right, so now we save. No? That's it. Settle, done. Okay. So this is a, uh, it's a process uh, that I can think for the termination case. Uh. So if you have uh, another scenario, then you are welcome to ask us. Uh. We can discuss together, see how the things to work around. Okay, because too much of the scenario might be happen. All right. So what next? Okay. I don't want to, re I don't want to new entry. Uh. I just re reinstatement. Okay, so let's say the staff maybe they wrongly terminate. Okay, they terminate the wrong sales entry. Okay, they process wrong, they terminate the wrong unit number, wrong purchaser. Okay, so what they can do is <clears throat> what can what they can do is to reinstatement, to do the reinstatement, to reactivate back again or something like that. All right, so click on the reinstatement. Reinstatement date, no? uh, after lah, huh? okay. okay, safe, yeah, safe. All right, that's it. We will come back to sales booking again. Huh? Okay, so reinstatement now, huh? to reactivate back the account. All right, okay, now execution. So I need to click the execution now. Okay, when is the execution done? 2017, the next day again. All right, 17. So this is the final check. Now. Okay, expiry date, of course you can change. Now. Okay, so I mean the whole, I mean the whole development process. Now. Okay, so I think according to act, maybe it's two years. I think remember it's two, two or three years. Now. Okay, then you change. You set accordingly, no? okay? Then the uh, MCO problem, then they can maybe they can have a, a dispute to extend, 
okay, maybe five years, six years, or oh, 60 months, how many days. So set accordingly, lah. then you have a record to keep track. Lah. All right, so this one, leave it. Lah. So, still stuff, uh, everything remain. Next, okay, still this particular, so you see, when you come to, I mean, when you come to execute the things, you still can change the name. Okay, let's say that maybe a husband going by, then cannot approve, also use the wife name, then the house also uh, under the wife name, then they can change to the wife name. Okay, remove, then add again with the wife name. Okay, this doesn't matter. Okay, safe. Okay, done. Okay, so if according to our schedule, the PBA schedule, the first stage upon of signing is issued automatically because of there's a formula to control. So once you execute the things, system will automatically help you to issue the first 10% billing. Okay, now I'll show you. Transition processing, progressive billing. See, the first billing. Okay, I do nothing else now, but system will automatically create for me. Lah. Okay, first billing. But of course, if you don't want system automatic do for you, then you can just throw away the formula. Lah. There's a metric formula there. Okay, you can just remove it. Then, uh, of course, it's on your own. Lah. Okay, you need to remember to create the billing. Lah. All right. So this is the billing, oh, then of course, the uh, first 10% paid pay by the owner. I'm ah, sorry, no, the purchaser. Then you need to clean the, clean the transitions. Oh. 17. Okay, the pay by check. Pay by check, okay. Uh, check number, okay. 50K. Oh, 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 50K. All right, do the allocation. Okay, do the allocation. Safe. Okay, done. That's it. Okay, remember uh, what we talked about the loan just now? We have submitted the loan. I mean, we have a record showing, I mean, we have a record recording the, this guy, purchaser, they have a loan submitted. Okay, now, of course, they get approval, so that's why they assign the execution. So, what we need to do here is, we need to set the status to approve. Okay, set the status to approve, then divert progressive billing to financial. Okay, because after 90%, I mean, from the 90% billing after, I mean the after the first 10% billing, uh, everything will build to the build to the bank regime. Uh. So just divert progressive billing to the financial. Uh. All right, safe. Done. Okay. So basically, uh, I mean the very initial, very initial stage is just doing this, all these things only. Uh, register sales entry key in the payment, or maybe record the loan status. Then after some time, okay, after some long times, uh, maybe one or two months, okay, one or two months, the first architect, I mean the first architect certificate, I mean the, uh, yeah, yeah, the certificate, okay, the certificate that come out, then you need to update inside, inside the system, uh, then you can build the stage two, uh, <coughs> build the stage two to your purchaser, uh, Okay, or the bank. Okay. But of course, if that is a very, very rich guy, is a cash buyer, then you don't need to go through the loan tracking. Huh? Okay, cash buyer, huh? you don't need to do. Huh? Okay. Okay, now, uh, certificate have come in. So what we can do is, we go to the documentation, construction update. Okay, construction update. PB schedule. Uh, I think just now is uh, HDA1, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, HDA1. Select lot number. All lots. 
Okay, you have a 500 unit and 500 unit. Okay, now I'm going to update the stage two to A. To A. So look at your certificate data. So when is the certificate date? So after three months, uh, maybe one month? One, two months. After one month. Okay, let me make it difficult. All right, then update stitch. Done. Okay, I have done the update the stage. Now, you can go and generate your progressive billing. Huh? Okay, so go to the transition process saying, progressive billing, generate. Okay, you don't need to add one by one. No need to add one by one. Okay, uh, accept some exception, uh, exception case uh, or something happen, then you have to add manually. Okay, uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, that I, I believe that time we will have discussed with our team now. So that one, skip for this, go to generate. Okay, you can go for global scanning or you can go for selective scanning. Or maybe the certificate is just update for some stage only and you need to build according uh, what is the unit number, selected unit number. Lah. Okay, so what is the progress building date? So just now, what is the certificate? Uh, yeah. Or maybe the next day I build. Uh. Right. Next day I build. Okay. Okay. Party batch. All the, all the party or uh, depend how many batch you have. Or the particular single unit number. Okay. Uh, that's one guy only. So I build to one. The only guy. Next. Yep. That's it. Uh, 50,000 according to the schedule, how many percentage of that? Uh. Okay, I think the stage two also 10%, uh, so they'll come off 50k. All right, lot number, uh, the, the purchaser. Service code, you see, they are set to a CMB already, which means when you're posting, I mean, when you do, when you're posting this uh, to the purchaser account, this bill will divert to the bank already. Okay, this bill will direct divert to the bank already. So basically you have nothing to do. Lah. Okay, uh, nothing to do actually. Okay, so this code, this, 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 uh, description, uh, post to account. Okay, click post to account only. All right, then you can print out a bill or print out the bill or pass to the, send to the bank or ask them to make the payment. Lah. So this part I am not sure how's the how your how how how's your company process uh. Okay, so now the bill has sent to the the financial the bank and the bank has issued the check uh, for this payment. Okay, so what we can do is official receipt. Uh. Okay, when you receive money, go to official receipt. Uh. Okay, or maybe credit the redemptions, right? So I'm not sure what's the what's your flow lah. Okay, I uh, just follow whatever we know right now. Okay, but usually the first payment will go for the redemption lah. Okay, then you need to issue the credit lah. There's a redemption some credit note uh, ID. Yeah, loan redemption. Okay. All right. Uh, issue the 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 our uh, potato fan. Oh, uh, according lah. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what's the which 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 one the process lah. Okay, do according only. Yeah, redemption pay for redemption lah. But if everything still go to the official side first, or maybe your account side back end there do some do some something, then okay, go for it. Okay, uh, end of the day, bank issue check. Unit number this issue to the financial. Is a check or maybe now uh, online banking? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, check number, check number, check number, check number. Okay, thank you. Okay, come out how much? 50k. Then, of course, need to do a location. No? Okay, set. So, oh, that's it. Basically, you just update the stage, then generate the bill, key in the payment. Uh, this all the standard procedure. Okay. 
So this is basically all the standard procedure. Lah. So for this other information you use when you need. Lah. Oh, late payment interest is the, the late payment interest. Lah. If the, I mean, if the, pre, I mean, uh, the, the invoice has been passed the due dates and still nothing to come in, then maybe there's an instruction come up from the top management and say, uh, charge the interest. Okay, get the interest. To, 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 to charge to the purchaser, oh, those kind of things, then you can generate your interest. Oh. Okay, interest setting, remember just now based on the GL code there. Okay, 21 days, 10% per annum. Uh, the, these are the settings. Oh. All right, so just basically just generate. Okay. Generate, slightly scanning. Uh, let's say, okay, 31st. Next. Uh, use the party batch uh, uh, generate for everyone uh, or you just generate for any single part, single unit. All right, next. So then the system will calculate uh, if the item has overdue, then there will something come up. Okay, so no matured transaction has been found because no one has been delayed. Uh. Okay, but delay might be happen sometimes. So uh, who's know, maybe in the middle something wrong. Uh, the bank late to issue the check, make the payment, oh, something will go wrong, I'm sure. Right, so uh, progressive billing just now, we have, I have shown you a lot. This is to generate your progressive billing. Lah. All right, miscellaneous billing, I think this is after the VP. Lah. Okay, after the VP only come out this billing, lah, like the, maybe the VP billing, the first four months or three months or how many months that you, uh, according, uh, I mean, according your policy, I mean, your agreement or anything else. Uh, okay. This is the miscellaneous billing. Uh, uh, the first four months at once payment of service charge sinking fund, or maybe security deposit, utility deposit, those charges. All right. Okay. Uh, debit note. Uh, debit note and credit note usually for the adjustment purpose. Uh, okay. Just use when someone advise you to key in some transactions, uh, okay, use when it necessary. Uh. So as you can see, the interface is the same, but yeah, forget about the GST things. Uh. Forget about the GST, it's no longer here. Okay, just ignore the GST only. So click on the app button, the date, the unit number, issue to which party, uh, remarks, okay, if you write in some remarks, okay, let's say this is an adjustment or something, then you need to write in the remarks, oh, easy for your team to understand and also when during the audit, okay, so jail code, what is the jail code, okay, then the description, oh, then the amount, and save, okay, that's it, <clears throat> so debit note, this is debit note, so it's the same things come to the credit note, so you just add and key in the information, sir. Okay. So payment voucher, I have shown you just now, lah, for the refund case, lah, you usually, lah, what I can think, okay, what I can <coughs> consider is uh, only the refund things, lah. All right. Late delivery charge. So uh, let's say touch wood, they have delayed the, the project has delayed, lah. <coughs> the project has been delayed. So there's a late delivery charge function over here. So basically just generate, uh, generate only. System will calculate accordingly uh, how many days you delay, then how many set, how many, uh, I mean the money. Okay. So uh, agent commission, this is corporate. <coughs> this is the working with the agent system there. Uh. Okay, uh, it's another, need another time spare for that. Uh. Okay, but if your guys have a, I mean, if your guys have practice agent, then you can contact us uh, for the agent commission things. Okay. Account allocation. This function is for, let's say, uh, when you do the official receipt, the normal process, uh, normal process. When you do the official receipt, you key in the things, then you need to key in the... Oh, sorry, one second. Ah.
Oh, yes, got mute. I didn't notice. Yeah, okay. Sorry, let's repeat again. Okay, I think we just now stop over here. Okay, account location. So we repeat again, account location. Okay, so uh, this process is this process is for the to reallocate the item or maybe some allocation after work. Okay, so we go to official receipt. We practice one. Okay, so if this receipt, okay, uh, you have something to update. So maybe receipt is not paying for this progressive billing and you want to make it right. So I edit. Okay, open the receipt. Uh. Open the receipt. Edit. There's a reverse allocation button here. So I click on the reverse allocation. And save. Okay. Then you can change the information. Uh, or maybe other unit. I key wrong unit. Okay. Or maybe a uh, check number. Uh, Okay, correct the chat number or I carry out the date. Okay, save. Okay, done. So now I want to reallocate my progressive billing. Okay, or allocate other things. So I go back to account locations. <clears throat> okay, so this is the open credit document, uh, the so called the uh, unallocated amount. So I select. So uh, this is uh, by our system default, they will automatically capture your receipt data, but somehow maybe sometimes the browser is not listening to us, not listening to the code. So then this part you need to take some, uh, need, I mean this part you need to take notice. Uh. So put the receipt date, uh, 31st July, is it? Yeah, receipt date 31st July. Okay, make sure you put the receipt date, uh, then next. Okay, now the... This is the only item. Lah. Okay, so I take and save. Okay, that's it. This is how you allocate the item or reallocate the item. All right. Okay, next will be the account reversal. Lah. This one, just now, just now mute, so mute my voice. Okay. So, Debbie note. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I need to explain Debbie note again. Okay, so this account reversal uh, is for you to cancel the document. Uh, okay, but depends your uh, management instruction now uh, whether want to void, okay, use the thing void or issue a credit note to contra it. Okay, so for to void the transition, okay, just now I have created a Debbie note. Okay, so let's say this is the one. Uh, okay, this Debbie note. Okay, somehow uh, I'm not sure how it charged to the uh, the purchaser, so now need to be cancelled. Okay, so either use the credit contra it, or you can go for a simple one, a curry reversal. Okay, so I just select the document. Okay, debit note. This is the one I need to cancel. Select and what document? I just want to what? Okay. So put the reversal date. Uh. Usually we will advise put the date same as the document date. Uh. So document date of document date will show over here also as well. Okay, uh, you can just copy. Select. Void. Okay. So put the same date. Uh. Okay. And next. Write the remarks. Uh. What's the reason you go and cancel this? Okay. Uh, what's the reason? Wrong reissue. Okay, next. Okay, then there's a dead void. Lock. So when you open the debit node, they're also showing the white word. Lock. Okay, and you cannot edit or do anything else. Okay, that's it. So account reversal. So, yeah, okay. So tax. Invoice cancellation is for the GS, GST time, uh, during the GST time. Uh. Okay, I'm not sure whether in the future GST will come back or not. Okay, but don't worry about the residence. I mean the resident title, I mean the residential project. Uh. No GST right last time. So now, last time we don't apply for the commercial, those things only. So tax invoice cancellation basically is the same action as the account reversal. Uh, but the difference is, 
a card reversal that will create an internal reversal item. But the tax invoice cancellation that will remove the credit note. Okay, they will input the credit note. So that there are some settings need to be done. Okay, so this one leave it. Advanced payment setting. Uh, I don't think there's an advanced payment unless those are the cash buyer. Okay, unless it is a cash buyer. So if there's a cash buyer that pay in advance first. Okay, they pay in advance. Then of course you can key in the receipt. Lah. Okay, let's say there are some cash buyer. Okay, you can keep the payment, uh, this guy, and then check, oh, purchaser, keep all the information, uh, huh, as usual. How much? Like? 200k. Okay, can they just pay one check 200k for now for the advance payment things? Uh, uh, I don't think I don't think this happened. Uh. Okay, but let's say there's a, maybe there's a scenario of really, really rich guy over here. Okay, account location of chat number, anything. Uh. Okay, account location. Advanced payment, you can do over here. You can set the advanced payment now. Wait for the privacy billing. Uh. How much? 100K. Save item and accept. There you go. So make sure you take and save. So how our advanced payment work is, they will alert, they will check, the, they will do accordingly. Lah. Okay, your code has set to progressive billing. Okay, so which means every time when you generate the progressive billing, you when you post to the purchaser account, our system will automatically automatic allocate the charges. Okay, automatic allocate the billing. So it's just that only. Lah. So this is uh, our advanced payment function. Lah. So if you have this, I mean, this rich guy happen, lah, cash buyer happen, okay, then you can set the advanced payment, then the system will do accordingly. So your, I mean, the, the, the user, they don't need to, I mean, every time need to remember to do the location, okay? Okay, who knows, maybe one, one day the staff forgot to do the location. <clears throat> then cause the interest charge to the purchaser. Then of course the purchaser will come and come and uh, argue uh, why why this thing happened. Uh. So if really have this kind of cash buyer, then set the advance payment. Uh, okay. So cancel. Uh. I don't need cash buyer. Okay, next document query. Basically, this is uh, the master search. Uh. Okay, how I say master search. Okay, in each of the transaction function over here, official is it uh interest on property billing, debit or credit note, you will see there's a list on the top right. Okay, every function that has a list on the top right. Okay, this list that will search the document within the function itself only. Okay, so let's say official receipt. You come to list, you search some document, they only show the receipt number by, uh, receipt number for you. You go to progressive billing, you do some searching, they will only search only progressive billing for you. Okay, same for the credit note, debit note, payment order, and those are the document. But in the document query, they are search overall. So let's say uh, query, document number, let's say the number one. Number one, I just search number one within query. All the number one, you see, all the document number one, they will come up. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the so called the master search, search overall. All right, that's all. Sales commission processing. Uh, this is a process the agency or stuff. Uh, this one you can ignore first. Post to general ledger. This is the for the cow part. No? Post to post the transition to the GL general ledger. Post the GL. Okay. Post the GL transition is to reverse the posting. If something, I mean, uh, there's a, some amendment you need to do and you cannot do because of the posting. Okay. It's already post to the GL. You cannot do the amendment. Then you need to reverse the posting that only can continue your amendment. No? So this function 
is to reverse the posting. All right, so basically transition processing is that only. Okay, so just a normal procedure, lock key receipt, generate the progress billing, maybe they they been the credit adjustment, all those things. All right, so now we come to documentation. Okay, documentation. Oh, I'm not sure whether I'm not sure whether your system whether have the same uh, function there, oh, but as long as the function is there. Lah. <clears throat> so now what we have in the documentation in our demo, okay. Purchaser account setting. This is the something like the the purchaser information. So. Okay. I go to I open this unit number. Wait, like this. Okay, open this unit number. So agreement info. So you can see overall the I mean the basic information. So. Okay, of course you can print the sales form from here. Okay, there's a sales form. Okay, press on it, the sales form, then print up. So this is our standard format. Okay, this is our standard format. Lah. Okay. And yeah, one thing, the only place you can click the back button is when you preview the document. This is what we call preview the document. Uh. Okay, preview document. So only this screen, you can click the back button. Uh. Hey, why can I click? Hey, I think just need, just know something wrong. Okay, never mind. I, I just go to other function. Uh. Okay, only the preview page, you can click the back button. Uh, purchaser account setting. If you are purchaser account setting not in the documentation, then it should be inside the inquiry and communication. Uh. Okay, you try. You can try look at the uh, inside the inquiry or communication there. Okay. Uh, I think this demo account we have uh, messed up already lah. Uh, the, the 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 what the sequence. Okay, the sequence. I think we have messed up already. So. Purchaser account setting, I think it should be inside your inquiry or communication. Nah. Right? So it doesn't matter, sequence is over, over I mean, in, yeah, is that, uh, as long as you have this function. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, uh, agreement info. Lah. So, sales follow just now I show you. So, this is the information that you are uh, about the, the SPA. Lah. Okay. Purchaser info. Uh, this is the purchaser info. Lah. So if let's say the purchaser have changed the phone number or maybe change of address, okay, or maybe other thing else, then you can come to purchaser account setting, purchaser info, you can edit, edit contact, update the information. Lah. Okay, then you can update the information. Lah. All right. Then you can accept and save. All right. So service party. So they will show you all the service party, and of course you can edit lah. So let's say in the, in the middle, maybe maybe a purchaser lawyer they change already, change to somewhere else. Okay, save. Okay, and of course there's some uh, other information that you can. Uh, uh, I mean, you get free up to up to your user. Okay, stakeholder who are stakeholder. Uh, sales agent, service party one and two. This is for reserve. Let's say you have other service party, and you have other party want to link. Okay, general info. This is the general info. Lah. So maybe sometime we have some extra information, or maybe you have some extra information you want to put in uh, during the printing or anywhere else. So we might use this field to represent the things. Lah. All right. Okay, lead tracking uh, is just an uh, information for you. Lah. So it's uh, basically you can see over here, lah. the booking date is on this, execution date is on this. Reminder to apply loan, I don't think now is uh, required. Lah. Okay, but un unless it's really uh, too late, then you can issue a letter. Lah. So this, these things you can process where inside the sales admin diary. Okay, I will show you later on. Okay. okay, file cabinet, this is to uh, let you to upload some document over here. Lah. 
Okay, we have no limit any uh, whatever the document, how many files you can upload, but we limit on the size, 4 MB per file. Which means one file you can upload, the maximum file size is 4 MB. So try to control the file size. Huh? Okay. All right, so this is all about the purchase account setting. Huh? Okay, next debtor account information. So this is more like the, the amounts matters. Uh. So the amount things. Uh. So financial summary. So uh, it's a summary. Uh. You can check over here. Uh. So <clears throat> basically nothing to explain over here. Uh. It's just a summary. Okay, it's just a summary. And transaction items. It's more like the stable of account, but this is a, uh, <clears throat> you, can, you can present everything in over here. Uh, and there's some filter for you. Okay. Building stage. This is to let you to review some extra information. So, so you can see this party, I mean, this, uh, this uh, <coughs> SBA, this particular uh, open signing is on uh, 17. Then the stage uh, completion is on 27, but being date is on 34. So some extra information is over here. Lah. Okay, and then also let you to check about the redemption. Lah. Okay, let you to review about the redemption. Okay. Okay, so next, sales admin diary. So basically, this is the, our sales admin diary or something like a, you can call it a reminder, lah, task reminder to ask you to do. Okay, so basically, it's a very general task over here. So as you can see, they will remind you when there are some purchaser. Okay, remind purchaser to sign SPA before the pocket expiry. Okay, so which means uh, just not what, 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 what we do. Lah. Okay, we give 15, I mean, we give how many? 15, I, I, if I remember. I give 15 days for just now my sales case. Okay, before 15 days, you must uh, go and sign the SPL. So then from here, you can issue the letter. Uh, we have a standard letter. Uh, so of course, if you have your own letter or your own wording, you can send to us. Uh, we will try to see and help you to insert the note. Uh. Okay, so you can click on the issue this, then the system will process the things up. Okay, so and then the second reminder, purchaser to sign SPA after the booking expiry. So maybe this is the final reminder, some, some kind of final reminder, the booking expiry already. So then you send a letter to the purchaser, so ask, hey boss, whether you want to buy or not. Okay, so if you don't, I'm going to cancel things. Okay, or oh, something like this, <coughs> issue a letter. Okay, so now, uh, let's say apply purchaser to apply loan after SPA. So I don't think this, I don't think this practice anymore. Lah. Maybe this is the already the, maybe some old times, uh, process. Lah. But nowadays, I think during the booking take, booking stage, you need to go and apply the loan already. Okay, whether you whether you get a deal or not. Okay, but let, let's say really happen this kind of thing that like you sign the SPA first, but loan you get letter, then you can send out this <coughs> letter, lo, purchaser to apply loan. Okay, remind purchaser to apply loan after the SPA. Okay, sign SPA, but you still haven't get a loan. Are you a cash buyer or what? Oh, you can ask them. Okay, get a loan or you can pay the money. Okay, so next, if they already get a loan, but because there are some amount pending in the purchaser account then, so the loan, of course, they're not going to be released. Lah. Okay. So then you have a remind to ask purchaser to pay the differential sum. So let's say the first 10%, the loan only 90%. First 10% you have to pay uh, unless, uh, otherwise, your, uh, otherwise your bank doesn't give me any money. So I need to pay, I need to remind the purchaser to pay differential sum. Lah. Okay, issue a letter, another letter. Basically, sales admin diary is for you issue a letter purpose. It's, a, it's kind of reminder, task reminder only. Okay. So after the after the purchaser make the payment, then you can come and 
com, uh, I mean, you can come and submit this all. Confirmation of the differential sum paid all. Okay, then you can send again, uh, maybe there's a letter. Okay, you have a letter to send to the bank. Uh, this purchaser, they already settled their part. Then you can release your loan now. So, there's another thing to request for loan release. Uh, to ask the financial to release the payment now. Uh. Okay. Okay, right. Next, uh, we notice invoice to end financial. Uh, when something I'm not sure what is the situation. What I mean, what's the, uh, what 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 is the scenario? Uh? So as if there's some um, case happen and you need to really notice the invoice to the financial, then you can process this flow. Uh, I mean, you can process this uh? So there will, I mean, our system will process something uh, to really notice the things. Okay, and then there's a date to record when you have really noticed the thing. All right. So these are the standard procedure. Uh? Hand over the vacuum possessions. Uh, is a is a clearing of data for key collections. Uh, to inform the inform the purchaser, can collect the key, clear the clear the debts. Uh, maybe there's some interest. Uh, who knows? There's some interest. You need to ask the purchaser letter. Then only can come to get the key. Uh, this is the letter for handling the backend processes. Uh. Okay. So for more details, I mean, if you wish to know more how and what it do, you can click on the help button. Uh. There's a sample over here. Okay, so uh, as I explained, no? processor sign SPA after poker expiry. So what system will do is system issue letter no? address to a processor and uh, advise them, uh, advising them to execute SPA. Okay, we did a deadline before the sales forfeit. Forfeit. No? So uh, if you're not really sure what the things do, then you can refer to the help topic. No? It's over here help button. So there are some basics information here. Okay, uh, basically it's all the stage. Okay, and qualified criteria. How the system can trigger this thing? I mean, how what to trigger system to capture this thing? So this is the scenario. Okay, when the purchaser booked the unit, and the SPA is not signed, but the booking is expired, then system will trigger this action for you. Okay, when the system trigger action for you, you will see now, view now one. Okay, view now one. Then you click the issue to, when you complete the whole action, they will come to here, issue one. Okay, so that's it. So what is this? What is this? Duke one. So what is my scenario here? But I said loan approved. Okay, my loan approved. Uh process billing have reached the financial portion. Okay, yes, the 90%. Okay, uh, I mean the next 10% already issued to them. Purchaser part is fully paid. Yeah, of course, the 10% already made the payment. So yeah, you can yeah, let's we issue this. Okay, yeah, this is the purchaser I do. Lo. Next. Uh, document date, uh, let's say 17 uh, 27, no, 23. So uh, we have a standard letter. Uh, so uh, just for your reference, uh, okay, letter head, and the information is over here. Okay, then the, 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 the I mean, the, the, the content, uh, the details. Uh, okay. So what else? Outstanding. Hey, what why the why the financial have outstanding fifty? I don't think I think they pay already. Payment, I think the because of date. Okay, it doesn't matter. I see. I see. So when the asset back to the sales I mean diary, system will ask have all the letter print out without error. So if you confirm, yes, okay. So see. Issue one, issue one. But somehow, if you find out some mistake later on, you want to issue again the letter, but because there's no any capture things already. So how to reword the action? Uh, we need to look at the help button again. Uh, help 
So I think at the bottom, yeah, the last, uh, yeah, reverse, uh, reverse the task action. So confirmation sort of bit, how we reverse. So we go to this function, processor loan tracking. Why is inside the loan tracking? Okay, why is inside the loan tracking? Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, confirmation of differentiate sum pit. Okay, so we need to go to the loan tracking, confirmation of different sum pit. So let's have a look. We go to the loan tracking and the confirmation of sum pit over here. See, there's a date over here. So what we need to do is edit. Uh, of course, we, we throw away. Lah. We remove, we untake, save. That's it. So now, if we go back to sales admin diary, hey, what is nothing? I nothing. I think because of the some criteria. What else criteria I need? Confirmation sound paid. Okay, I paid already. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, there are some, there are something you need to take notes. When every time when, okay, when every time you come to purchase loan tracking, you come and edit something, make sure this one set to the original, I mean, set back to the previous value. Lah. So if you already approved, so make sure you set to approve. Lah. Save. Okay, done. So, so I mean, diary, one record, come out again. Okay, then you can issue again your letter. All right, so that's it. This is for the sales inventory part. Okay, next construction update. So this I show have a showcase just now. This is to update the certificate. Okay, select the stage code, then you can update accordingly, then build the things. All right, so potential loan tracking, which I have come here to present. I have show you the some 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 uh, case scenario. Okay, progressive view notice. So let's say you don't want to go through the sales inventory to process the notice. Okay, you can come over here to, to do the notice first. Okay, usually the case happen is maybe the maybe the staff taking the wrong loan amount. Okay, this might be happen uh, because uh we always facing this kind of questions uh. All right. So the stuck in the long run amount, or maybe typo error, or maybe the loan have been revised. So you need to edit the loan. No? So when you edit the loan, the of course the I mean the billing, the project billing, the PB, the amount must be changed. Uh. Okay, change, and then you need to ask the purchaser to pay a difference. Uh. Okay, or maybe the financial they have provide more amount. Okay. You keen less, but this financial can provide more amount now. Then you need to re notice the bill again uh, to the financial. So when the system found out there are some variance because of this uh, adjustment, the loan adjustment, then you can have a recall. Uh, then you can process the re notice. Uh. Okay, there's a re notice button over here. So if really have to process, can process. Uh, I mean, if you really can process, then you can come over here to re notice the bill. Uh. So you will see the final adjustment, no? the original amount is this, then after what we need to, to re notice. Okay, so let's say if the purchaser, they have a get 100% loan now, okay, not 90%, 100% loan. So this, they will say to re notice 50K back to the financial. Lah. Okay, so I have not much example for you right now, but I'm sure you someday, I mean, somehow you are facing this question, uh, this problem uh, when you come to this, uh, your life data. All right. Okay, so next, title transfer uh, is just to record the date only. Okay, what I'm doing. So basically, it's just update the date only. So nothing else. Okay, backend possessions, update the date also. Okay, it's updated date only. Okay, yeah, key collection a bit different. They will calculate the LPI for you and the bid LPI. So, which means the there's some LPI is not generated yet. Okay, if there are some outstanding, they'll show at the below. Okay, they'll show the below there. 
but if there are some undeputed LPR, what, the, what does it mean is some interest that you are not generate yet, then you can go and generate it when, the, when they come to key, come for key collections. Okay, then you generate, then the ask the processor pay all the things, then you can process now no, for, for the key collection. So this also saving a bit on it. All right, uh, so if you have occupation, then of course you can go and sell, sell the things off. Okay, it's a date as well. Okay. Date holder code. What is this? No topic. So I'm not really sure what it is, but you can just ignore it if you're not going to use this date holder code. Okay, so this state holder code basically is just set a code to the state holder, uh, I mean for the for the for the for the for the for this only. All right, so let's see this part only. All right, next, inquiry and communication. This part is mostly for the statement things, uh, okay, the statement stuff. Okay, so account ledger uh is a very standard law, uh, it's a it's a stable of account, so called stable of account, or maybe short form called SOA. Okay. Put a U number, put a date range that you need, and there are some additional information here. So if you don't want to show the white item, then do not display white item. Okay, you see the difference? So system will hide the white item. All right, but anyway, I want to show all. Okay. <clears throat> what else? Uh, yeah, this is the statement. So basically, it's the statement of account only. So you get this statement of account, then you go and print, then you can maybe send to the purchaser or whatever documentation purpose. Okay. Okay, account outstanding. This is the outstanding statement. No? What are the items still pending payment? Okay, I have nothing pending now, so it's, there's no record. But if I generate new PV and I didn't make any payment, so they will, uh, I mean, they will show over here. This is the outstanding statement. Bill settlement status. Okay, when there are some dispute about the payment issues. Okay, why the things paid already, but still charge me interest, or those, uh, those the weird questions. So then you can come over here to track. Come over here to track the allocation status. Huh? So, uh, what is that? Payment refund. I think this is the refund case. Huh? Yeah, the refund case I do in the in the very initial there uh, during the termination. Yeah, this is the refund case. And this is the first 10% billing, 50K. And it's been allocated by this receipt number, this chat number. Okay, I paid on 17. And I allocate on 70 also, 50k. So nothing, lah, zero. Lah. Then next billing will be this uh, stage two. Lah. Stage 2A. Uh, yeah, stage 2A. Okay, 50k allocate by this payment, this check number, huh, blah, 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 this information. <clears throat> okay, so this is for the for you to track the, I mean, check the allocation status. Lah. Okay, next. LPI store. So uh this is LPI store as the as the name is the storeroom for your interest because sometimes maybe your your site practice not going to I mean not going to charge direct. I mean not going to direct charge the interest first. Okay, you want to charge, you want to generate the interest but put in somewhere else first. Don't want to show in the owner statement. Okay, you don't want to present the statement, don't want to present in the account site or anywhere else. So there's a process, I mean, there's a process that we can set post to LPI store. But I think your guys will not going to use this. Uh, but I roughly go through. Okay. When the setting activated, any interest, I mean, any LPI, uh, this LPI, in you know, transition processing, LPI, when you generate LPI, those LPI will post to LPI store. Okay, keep as a record first. Okay, then you have a record over here. Uh, okay. So inside this over here, you can click what document also, which means you can check first what are the items you're not doing, you don't want to charge, or, or maybe uh, something happened, you don't want to charge, then you can void the item. So when the things has been, I mean, adjustment, everything done, 
then we can deactivate the setting. Then user just go back to generate. So system will read. I mean, system will get based on these things and put up to the owner uh, purchaser account. Lo. All right. So uh, basically, not think much about this. Okay. Okay. Transaction offset tracking. This is the. I mean, this is the another version of the this bill settlement status. The track the tracking status are so called. So you can track according to your transaction type. So let's say receipt. Yeah, I want to check this receipt allocate to which item. So I just select. Then you have uh, this thing come out. This receipt is allocated to this. All right. Uh, it's basically just another tracking function for you. Okay. Undebited LPI, yeah, this is the thing I mentioned in the key collection there. So basically, it's the same thing. So. Undebited LPI is mean any LPI that you not generate yet, okay, you haven't generated yet. Okay, something supposed to charge interest, but you haven't processed or you, uh, yeah, you haven't processed. So, so they will show over here. So as of today, what are the interest supposed to be? Then you can click post to account, then they'll post to the purchaser account. Okay, so that's all. Okay, progressive billing statement uh, as the name of, so it's a statement of your progressive billing only. Okay, so you can take whatever the things you want to print. Okay, select, take, 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 and then print. Off. Okay, so basically it's just, it's a statement only, just a statement only. All right. Next, reminder cabinet. Okay, this is a reminder letter. Lah. I'm not sure whether you have uh, you going to use or not. Okay, so basically, this is to send out the reminder letter only. The general reminder, or the you know, uh, final reminder, first reminder, those things. So, generate. Yeah, you can go for global scanning or satellite scanning. So uh, this guy next. So what kind of reminder you want to include? So I want to include everything. Right? So basically this is the system will automatically check for you. So if let's say this purchaser, I mean this account, uh, <clears throat> they never generate any reminder, system will go for the first reminder uh, this round. So when maybe let's say after a certain period or maybe next month, you generate again the reminder. So if the things is haven't I mean the, the outstanding haven't set the system will process second reminder on this because last month I generated first reminder so next month system will go for second reminder so and then the next month again system generate they will go for final reminder and the end will be a demand notice okay so uh, this is the process so reminder that as a certain date that you assign no? so it's nothing because i have no outstanding okay that's it okay that's it okay this is the our reminder no? so next will be the letter and correspondence no? is a general letter function no? okay when you have some letter you want to print out we will print out with some information from the system like the purchaser details the bank details or the lawyer details, or uh, maybe sometime the what else? Uh, what, what I can think. Uh, 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 I'm not really sure. So let's say uh, there's some details you want to get from the system. Uh, okay. It's something like the the Microsoft Word, the Microsoft Word mail merge, something like that. Uh, okay. So basically, you add some letter over here, or something like this. Uh, okay. Example. Example, example, okay. Principal to all department, is it? You want to, for all department, okay. So next, I uh, will save. So I select this letter, I go and print. Uh, I put today date as a letter date. So I print for which party, uh, this one. Then I can assign uh, who I'm going to send. I send the purchaser. Then I need to CC to everyone, okay. I, or, you, or you don't need to CC, it's okay, it's fine. Okay, or just maybe to CC to the, the purchase lawyer. 
Okay, next. So then there's a format there. Lor. So depends on how, I mean, depends how we're going to help you issue on this letter. Lor. So because sometimes uh, some, some of the letter, uh, I mean, system standard cannot fulfill to you. So maybe needs some assist from our technical team. Lor. So then we will create an extra format over here for you to print out things. So if anything that you try, you want to wish to know, then you can contact the technical team. Oh. We will give our uh, best advice. Ah. Okay. So uh, yeah, something like this. Oh. It's a very general letter. Lah. Oh, position name, position info is over here basically. No, because I have no address. And these are the, yeah, the, the what? This is the, 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 the potential lawyer. Okay. Ah, and then most of our document function when you come to print as a printer, and you can export the document. Okay, forgot about I forgot mention this. So export document, there are four format provides for you lah. Excel, PDF, Word file, or just a normal text file. Well, depends which format you need lah. Then then export only. All right. And of course, sometimes if you want email, of course, you can use the email document. Okay, you can use the email document. Put in the sender email address and what the sender name or management of some measure of uh, what else. Okay, or maybe developer name, then the send email. Sorry, recipient is how many people you're selecting, how many purchaser you're selecting. Send a copy to me is only activate when you have only one recipient. So if you're more than one, then this option will be closed, uh, okay, to prevent your box, mailbox getting blocked or spam. Uh. Okay, so this is the subject. Uh, and this is the message. Uh. What is the message you want to write in the email there? And then you send. Uh. So this is uh, this is for, for customers subscribe our, I mean, using our subscription service. Uh. Okay, using our server for those licensing, I mean, purchase, uh, purchase the license, they host themselves, then this might need to work out with your IT team to so how to set up your SNTP things. Okay. Yeah, it's a, a bit long way to go. Okay. So that's all. Okay, next will be the report. So. Okay, basically these are the report that we have. Okay, of course, if you have some extra report that you need and we think it's a very good suggestion, uh, we will make it as our default. Uh. Okay. So transition summary is a very general report. Uh. So basically it's a, it's a summary of your transition within your date range. Okay, it's a summary of your transition within the date range that you set up. So basically nothing to play around, just set up the date and submit only. Okay, just set up the date and submit only. Okay, aging summary, uh, same thing. You want to aging as at uh, any date and then submit. So nothing else. So because no outstanding. So if you want to view everyone come out, then you need to take view zero amount. Lor. And it's only active account. I don't want to terminate active select. So that's it. So basically, reports uh just put in the date and submit only. Okay, put in the put in the date and submit only. This payment and collection is more like your collection report, no? So let's see, ah, collection report. Yeah, this is a collection report. This is all the OI received within this date range. Okay, so uh, there are some basic information here and extra options here. I want to know by payment mode. So I submit again. So I can know what's the payment mode. No? Where's my payment mode? Where's my payment mode? Payment mode. Oh, because I didn't select. So when you activate this pay, uh, categorized by payment mode, then you can select the payment column. Okay, and this, so what usually I will receive, check cash credit card on the banking. Okay, save, that's it. Then I can submit again.
Right, so uh, payment mode is coming out now. Cash, check, credit card. So then you have a then you can have a law <coughs> for reporting purpose. All right. So audit list. So usually you need this report for when you hey, take range when you are requesting some data lah by your auditor. So depends on how you play around the things. Okay. Document type is nothing. Uh, then you can add in the document type. Lor. So let's say I want progressive billing only. So I print the code. Lor. What is the code? You need or you need OR one only. Okay, that's it. Then I set to OR one. That range uh, from first day. Okay. So all the OR one will coming out. Lor. Okay, depends how you play around the things. Lor. All right, so uh, there's some next. Uh, I mean, there's a, another report there, huh? billing and settlement. So basically, it's a summary, lah, another kind of summary. Okay, statement layout you can choose. Lah. There are four. Okay, payment status, outstanding, any adjustment account, any payment mode. Okay, so you can try pay around lah, when you go to live. Okay, and this is a billing and redemption. Lah. Okay, redemption, redemption pay, blah, blah, blah. Thing. Okay, this formula will calculate based on the one specific geography only, which is CNRD. Okay, I'll show you CNRD. CNRD, re loan redemption. Okay, the program will only capture this code only. Okay, so any other than this code, if you want to create another code, let's say uh, CN. CNLL or loan redemption. I, I'm not sure. Lah. Something like that. Lah. So, you know, this is a redemption code, but our system only captured this specific code only. So, sometimes people may, uh, maybe someone will ask why the redemption doesn't capture because you use the wrong code. Lah. I mean, not the wrong code. Lah. It's different code. Our system only captured CNRD. All right. So, uh, this is a redemption report. Lah. Account receiver summary is another kind of the summary report. Lah. No? Okay, debit, credit, show you all the summary things. All right. Yeah, this is another report also. Okay. That step to summary. So, PB amount, how much you already bill, and how much is the balance, blah, 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 things. Okay. So, basically, uh, Sales admin is in this. Uh, I mean, that's, that's all for the sales admin, uh, usually. <clears throat> so, if you have any questions, then you can come, you can call to our technical team or email to our technical team to maybe we can work out together, see how we can help you to overcome your issues. Uh. All right, so I think that's all for the sales administrations. Uh. Okay. <clears throat>